Here's what happened last time on From the Ground Up. I think it's by far the best location we could have found. You have all the attributes of the urban network. MD hated the design that I'd done for the Chargers. Absolutely hated it. There's a lot of moving parts and a whole lot of design that needs to be figured out. We're going to try to do five years worth of work in 31 months. November 13th, 2017. The first shovel of dirt was removed from a 62-acre plot of land just west of the Las Vegas Strip. The Raiders, united with a team of tireless leaders from Nevada, are creating an ultra-modern, permanent stadium for the Raider Nation to call home. These are the stories of the people and the project, told from the ground up. With permits in hand, work on the stadium begins. First order of business, divert a large drainage tunnel that runs right through the middle of where the stadium is supposed to sit. When we purchased this property, we knew the box culvert came through the property like this. Now, there's many reasons that that doesn't work for us. The main one being that if you ever have a critical failure, you'll end up with a leak of water underneath the stadium. You'll end up having to do dewatering. All kinds of things can go wrong. So we sat with the Army Corps of Engineers and proposed that we move the box culvert. So now we've rechanneled the box culvert such that we don't ever have any water or high volume of water flowing underneath the building. The company selected by Mortensen McCarthy to perform this preliminary work is local Las Vegas contractors, Sahara Concrete. We are contracted to relocate the box culvert on the west side of the project that is impeding on the excavation for the bowl of the actual stadium. Being a small business helped us get on the project. We knew coming into this that, you know, the wet season was on us and timing and phasing has been uh, our biggest challenge. Danny and his crews work to move the box culvert out of the way. Continuing to finish the new tunnel frees a path for Mortensen McCarthy to begin the process of dirt removal. The stadium will sit below street level, or grade, serving several purposes. I'm going to call this grade. This is just where the ground typically is. We're going to come in, and we're going to dig a hole, and we're going to sink the bottom part of the bowl below grade. That allows us to have an event level ring road and a whole lot of stuff take place subterranean. This allows us to, when fans come into the building, some go down, some go up. It's also cooler. It also keeps the height of the building down a little bit lower, it makes it easier for us to comply with FAA regulations and lighting and things like that. Primarily, it gives us the ability to split the ingress and the egress of people so that we have really good circulation in the building. However, moving dirt in the Las Vegas desert isn't as easy as it sounds. Here, there's a little thing called caliche that has other plans for the heavy equipment. Caliche is nature's cement. There are certain properties in the soil in the southwest, water and then the soil pressure, and then it really just forms a substance that's as hard as concrete. It's, it's as hard as a, a natural made rock. So our site is dealing with a layer of caliche anywhere from about 10 to 40 feet thick, and the caliche is all underneath the entire footprint that we have to dig out. To spare the abuse on the equipment and tooling, the easiest way to remove caliche is to break it into manageable truck size chunks. So what you have to do is you either have to trench it out, hit it with a hoe ram, which is like a big hammer that hits the ground, or blast it. Once we've removed the overburden, the blasting process starts, and you can kind of see it in the background. It's all of the little white mole hills. So what they do is they take a drill, they'll drill down to the bottom, put a dynamite charge in there, fill it up with a stuff called ANFO, which is their explosives, stem it with P-Rock, We'll set the charge, and depending on which way they want to throw the shock wave, they'll do that away from the green concrete that we're currently pouring for the box culvert and for the deep foundations. Just an inch and eight by eight, so about a point three one. Really? Third of a pound. That's a lot of that that goes off. Yep, it's just one of these in every hole, and then we put the ammonium nitrate down in there, and that's what okay. That, okay. That's what does the boat. Are you the expert yes. blowing things up? Yes. Let me shake your head again. They spent over a decade trying to hurt me in this organization. 
Now we're gonna blow now you. Now you're worried now about me? Now they're worried about me. <laughs> How amazing is this? Hey, Alright, one minute blast warning, one minute blast warning. We try to do about nine, ten thousand yards if we can a day. And that's about ten thousand pounds of explosives. It's gonna burn through there twenty thousand feet per second. So when this bangs, that's gonna be going off basically. And then when he pulls it, it's like a snap. It sounds like a gunshot, so I don't get the spoon. And after I'm ready, I'll check with all my blockers. You can hold it with it, it's not gonna hurt you. Woohoo! This is never gonna be the same after this, Mark. All right, we got blasting at 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Fire in the hole. Fire in the hole. Fire in the hole. by myself, all by myself. Awesome! Today we have the last blast of our production blasting. This is uh, blast number 71. More blasting than I thought we were gonna do. We were planning on doing about a 10 foot cut on the whole thing because they thought they could dig the other 20 feet. It's just a lot more caliche here than we thought. Hey, it was good, good for us, good project. The convoy of trucks begin what the crew terms Mass X, the removal of over 1 million cubic yards of dirt and caliche with over 40,000 truckloads. That would fill approximately 300 Olympic-sized swimming pools. We're currently in our earthwork phase, as we were talking about earlier. We've excavated about 500,000 cubic yards of dirt out of a total of about a million cubic yards. So our excavation is about halfway there. The trucks come in from all around, lots of local small businesses that provide trucking opportunities. And then the soil is actually being exported off to, to fill up an old mining excavation. If you were with us last time, you'll recall that the Las Vegas Stadium is a design build, which means that although an architectural design has been completed, final engineering is continually being conducted ahead of the work in the field. We're designing portions of the building while they're putting concrete in. We're one or two months ahead of the construction that's taking place now. They execute this by splitting the construction in half. They started here, and they're gonna have a crew work this direction and a crew work this direction. And you'll see as the progress uh, is shown on this building, we'll be pouring concrete this direction. This allows excavation, concrete, and steel crews to work simultaneously on the project. Mass X finally reaches a point where the pilings that will support the entire building can be placed. They're called auger cast piles, and they range from 30 feet, the ones that don't have a lot of load, to 65 feet deep in the cores. And they basically hold everything up. What it does is it stabilizes the building so it won't sink, won't shift. You know, they calculate skin friction with the caliche and, and bedrock and stuff like that, and they'll come up with a length. We come in, we drill them, we put steel in it, and uh, then they build the building on top of it. Malcolm Drilling built some special tools for this job. We had to go through and pre-drill every single one of them, and then come back and drill them and fill them and put the concrete and steel in. These layers of caliche proved to be difficult to get through, and compared to many areas, California, a lot of that is sand and silt. They, they drill very easily. And this has just been a little little tougher, but they've stayed right on schedule and, and have made good progress. I'm from the Bay Area, lifetime Raider fan. So it's kind of nice to be out here and be a part of this. Today is Malcolm's last day drilling production piles. And so it's kind of a momentous occasion after about three months to, to get these guys finished. On this job, it was 86,785 feet calculates into about 16 and a half miles worth of piles under the ground here. The whole project is right on where we where we should be. Malcolm stayed pretty much right on schedule. We've had a couple of added piles due to design changes. They're well ahead of the, the next trade that comes behind them. So with the box culvert moved, the stadium bowl excavated, and the pilings completed, the project enters the next phase of construction, rebar and concrete. 
to be here today and see the, the ground actually be blown up and, and, and moving forward is pretty exciting. Really proud of you guys and uh, you're gonna build something that's gonna be special for a long, long time. It's gonna be iconic. So, love it. Soon, the Las Vegas Stadium will begin to emerge from the Nevada desert. Stay with us as we take you on an unprecedented look into the techniques and technologies, the steel and the stress, as well as the lives of the men and women responsible for building an ultra-modern stadium from the ground up.